many civilizations after the flood would arise very quickly. If you got a bunch of smart people, Noah's sons, having, you know, 15, 20 kids per family or whatever, and they're going to go off to this area and they're going to build their own civilization. Well, it wouldn't take them long as long as they've got high IQ. They might not have all the technology. They might have to make stone tools at first, you know, until they can dig a hole to find the iron to melt it down to get, make the steel tools. They would know how to do it. It's kind of a Gilligan's Island situation. But within 50 years, you could build a civilization. You look at Robinson Crusoe, you know, lands on an island. So after 20 years, he's got a whole, <clears throat> got a farm, got a house, got a, a fort, did it all himself, you know. So yeah, it doesn't, especially you get smart people in situations like that, it, you can build a civilization in a hurry. It's interesting, if you study history, all of the ancient civilizations, the Babylonians, the Sumerians, the Greeks, they all, are the Chinese, they just arose out of nowhere. Poof, there's a civilization. There is no evidence of this stuff they teach in school, of them going from hunters and gatherers and grunts and groans, you know, caveman stuff, becoming civilized and building cities. There's no evidence of that. It's, the farther back you go, it's all of a sudden, poof, there's the beginning of the Egyptian civilization, the beginning of the Chinese civilization, just like they moved in and built it. This iron pot, we've got a model of it here, was found inside a lump of coal. This is a replica. You can get a replica from Carl Baugh. They're breaking open a lump of coal and there's an iron pot inside. They examine the coal that comes out and it's molded right to the pot on both sides. I mean, the coal formed around the iron pot. What would you conclude? That a coal miner dropped it? No, because then the coal won't be conformed to the pot. I would conclude that they had iron and were making iron vessels before the flood. During the flood, they got buried in a forest of trees and squished and turned to coal, and of course, it's not going to affect the iron any. How do you get an iron pot in a lump of coal? Ancient man must have been smart, not primitive. In Peru, they've got giant stone walls like the one in the picture here. These stone walls are phenomenal. Some of the rocks in there are so huge, we can't even move them today. One of the stones down in Peru weighs 20,000 tons. Now, to give you an idea how big that is, the largest crane on Earth today can lift 3,000 tons. I think they just built one in Japan, uh, if I recall, for unloading ships. I just heard about it in 2003 or 4 that can lift 6,000 tons. What is truly impossible about the block is that the size of a, it's the size of a five-story house and weighs 20,000 tons. We have no combination of machinery today that could dislodge such a weight, let alone move it. We can't even break it loose from the ground, let alone move it. We can't do it. This is a little zinc and silver vessel. It was found inside rock, supposed to be 600 million years old. There's a great article in The Puzzle of Ancient Man about the... Uh, little device found in a ship that was sunk in 100 B.C. in the Aegean Sea, which is right next to Greece, okay? It's got an analog computer on board. How on earth did they know about analog computers in 100 B.C.? It's called the uh, Antik Antikythera device, Antikythera mechanism. The History Channel uh, in March of 2005 was amazing. It had a whole hour-long message about this Antikythera device found in Greece. They actually built a working model of it and said this thing, by turning the crank, would be able to predict where the planets would be or the sun would be. It'd be like an amazing computer for ships navigating. 100 BC. No, ancient man was not primitive. You can get copies of this hammer from our uh, museum. This uh, Dr. Baugh has the original in his museum. He lets us make replicas of it. This was found in 1934 in uh, Texas, New London, Texas. When they first found the hammer, the handle was petrified, what was left of it. And they looked at the hammer and said, man, it was in solid rock. I said, what on earth? How can a hammer be in rock? And the rock was supposed to be 400 million years old. So, of course, guys that, who believe in evolution would say, well, that just proves aliens visited the planet 400 million years ago and one of them dropped his hammer. I mean, that's the kind of logic they, they use. Instead of thinking, you know, maybe our whole time scale's wrong, they will never consider that. They cut a little notch in the hammer with a file in 1934 to see what kind of metal it was. It is still not rusted, the notch. It's a type of a stainless steel. Battelle Laboratory analyzed it and said it's 96% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and three-quarter percent sulfur. And then they said, you know, we don't think you can get those elements to combine unless you do it under a much stronger magnetic field. Probably the pre-flood Earth had a magnetic field 
eight or ten times stronger than what we have today. This was found in Iraq, this uh, little battery. Quite a few of these were found. They knew about electricity 2,000 years ago. The Egyptians apparently knew about electricity. Here's a hieroglyphic showing snakes in some kind of chamber hooked with a wire going to a little generator of some kind. We don't know. There are two theories. One is they are using electricity to mummify the snake or do something, or they're using electric eels to produce the electricity. I don't know which way the electricity is going, or even if it's electricity. But I think <clears throat> we've got the wrong idea to say modern man is smart and ancient man was stupid. I think ancient man knew a lot. They knew about brain surgery. Quite a few skulls are found like this. This process is called uh, trepanning. They would actually cut into somebody's head, and many are found with the hole healed over, which indicates the patient lived. Okay? I mean, cutting a hole in the head is no big deal. But some of the Ica stones from Peru show what appears to be brain surgery. Dr. Dennis Swift, that spoke at our boot camp in 2004, has uh, some of the instruments, the co hardened copper instruments that they would use for brain surgery or for surgery, period. Okay? Qu ancient man knew how to do all kinds of things with people's heads, besides cut them open and let them heal. They did made strange shapes to the heads. They apparently did heart surgery, from some of the Ica stones anyway. It appears that they're doing you know, open heart surgery. Here's a guy with an artificial limb attached, so they knew about that. That would have been you know, 2,000 years ago. This little machine appears to be some kind of steam engine. They might have known about some kind of power like that 2,000 years ago. They certainly knew about the wheel. This little cat was found on uh, wheels to move around, a little kid's toy apparently, in some of the Inca Indian tombs. They knew certainly were smart as far as biology goes. This little spider is one of the uh, little nothing, it's 150 feet tall. It's one of the Nazca line images. We cover some of that on uh, video too, but they knew that to make this spider with no eyes because it's blind, these little spiders are extremely rare. It's only an eighth of an inch long and it lives in caves, in the dark, in the Amazon, a thousand miles away from where the drawing is. So they really knew about their biology. And they knew to make the one leg longer, and it's the correct leg too. Third leg down on the right, on the right side. That leg, during mating season, for 15 seconds, that one leg grows longer and it changes DNA off the tip of that leg. And they knew that. So they were not ancient, uh, not stupid. They were ancient, but they were not stupid. This uh, Pira Reese map of 1513 shows Antarctica with no ice on it. How did they know to, first of all, how did they find Antarctica? How did they know to map it with no ice? Something was different, okay? This metallic sphere was found in South Africa. It has three parallel grooves around the equator, but it was found in what they said was pre-Cambrian material, 2.8 billion years old. Well, of course, I disagree with the 2.8 billion years. It's a human artifact, quite obviously, found in rock, supposed to be 2.8 billion years old. But see, rather than question, you know, maybe it's not 2 billion years old. Guys like Michael Cremo, who wrote the great book on stuff like this, they're called Upart, Out of Place Artifacts. O-O-P-A-R-T. He studies all kinds of these things. Now, he's a Hindu. Michael Cremo has the book Hidden History of the Human Race. He says this proves aliens came and visited the earth 2.8 billion years ago. Rather than question, hey, wait, wait, maybe the whole geologic column is wrong, they just, I don't know why, they're not allowed to question that. 